welcome to the Body Love Summit where we're having real conversations about everything from body shame to body love with some amazing women who are using their expertise to revolutionize the body image movement. We're ha so happy you're here with us today. Joining me today is Kate Merlt. She is a confidence and bo body connection coach whose mission is to bring play and joy and love and laughter into the world. <laughs> Yay for Kate! Yay. Hello. Welcome, Kate. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so great to be here. Yay. We're so glad that you're here with us, bringing that joyful, playful spirit to the Body Love Summit conversation. And uh, maybe as a way of introducing yourself, you can uh, just give a little background on your story of your Body Love journey. Yeah. I mean, how long do we have? That could be, you know, yeah. a freaking novel. <laughs> it goes on and on. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's so fascinating because it, I feel like everyone is like looking for that one moment. Right. But this like body love and all of that goes way back pretty much to when we're little kids. Right. Yeah. Um, most recently I've been working with women who have that insecurity and who have, you know, they work out, but they don't feel connected to their body or really in tech intellectualize everything and yeah. get stuff, but don't necessarily feel it because we were never really taught to feel it. And I learned to shut down my feelings at a really, really young age or to just rationalize them away in my head because it was, it, I didn't feel safe to feel them in my body. Yes. And I remember very specifically, um, <laughs> When I was 11 years old, I was in sixth grade, and this is like the moment. You know, everyone kind of has that moment when they realize yeah. that they're not good enough. Yeah. Um, well, maybe they don't, but I, I I had this moment very clearly in my head. I was waiting for my best friend by her locker after yeah. like fourth or fifth period or whatever it was, and standing next to her locker were two guys who one of them was locker was right next to hers. I still remember this kid's first and last name, even though I never, ever once had a conversation with them other than this moment where – one of the guys looked at the other one and said, they looked, they looked at me and said, would you date her? We're 11. Remember? Yeah. And yeah. this kid whose name I'm not going to mention, but who is still in my head yeah. looked at me and said, no, she's too fat. Holy. You're 10 and or I 11? Was, I was, I was 11. Yeah. I was just standing there, yeah. not even engaging in the conversation. Yeah. And that was yeah. a moment when I really was like, oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. what happened? Like what, what, you know, <laughs> why am I even caring about this? This is stupid. I'm better than this. Yeah. And I realized that, you know, I've been having those same conversations with myself for more than a decade. Yeah. And I think that happens to so many women is we've had the same conversation, whether we realize it or not yeah. most of our lives. Yeah. And, Oh, it breaks my heart because that's what we're, that's what we're spending our brain power on. That's yeah. what we're using our lives yes. for. Yes. Yes, exactly. I remember when I was like, uh, you know, was trying to like really focusing on like, I'm going to be healthy and lose all this weight and I'm going to, you know, mm -hmm. do all this stuff. And I remember I was like, okay, it's going to happen. And then I thought to myself, oh, I wonder what all those other people, the people who I deem as being appropriate body sizes and don't need to fix things about themselves. I was like, I wonder what people do with all that time and energy and money mm. that I'm currently putting into fixing myself and they don't need to fix themselves. So what are they doing with all that time and energy? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm yeah. Amazed. And the, I was say the funny part is like they probably have their own things that they're dealing with yes. in different ways. Of course. We always just assume that somebody else is perfect. Exactly. And <laughs> of course. I was in college, I was writing articles and I <laughs> super dork. I wrote an optional thesis in my undergrad. Just gonna put that out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I was um I was writing a lot about advertising and this idea of beauty and self-esteem in advertising and when that sort of all came about mm -hmm. and how it's shifted over the years. And I got so depressed and angry Yeah, because I, I couldn't walk down the street. I was living in Chicago. I couldn't walk yeah. down the street without seeing something. And my brain was like, this is why this is bad for X, Y, and Z yes, reasons. Yes, yes. And, <laughs> and I got so mad about it. Yeah. But at the same time, what nobody knew was that I was weighing myself 16 times a day and counting every yes. calorie that I put in my mouth and yes. going to, I was going to yoga class, like praying to God that I was going to lose weight by yes. going to yoga class. Yeah. 
And I felt like such a fraud yeah. because here I was like trying to champion the feminist cause. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I hated myself. Yeah. I was like, what's, and then I hated myself for hating myself and not yeah. believing the stuff that I wanted to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's crazy because I was fighting so hard for all of it. I was yeah. fighting yeah. to change it. I was yeah. fighting to change myself. Yeah. And I, I see that all the time now. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. So like a couple of things come to mind about just how there's, we all want love and acceptance. And so when we're told that there is this ideal that will bring you love and acceptance, even if you can see that that's uh, a manufactured ideal, a very narrow manufactured ideal that is serving a purpose in our culture, Mm -hmm. (laughs) even if we can see that it doesn't mean that we don't still have those very natural human feelings of wanting to be loved and accepted exactly as we are. But if we feel like we need to change it to get that love and love and acceptance, we'll still feel those feelings of wanting to change it, you know? And it reminds me too of, um, like on, you know, on that note of being aware of that stuff, uh, my friend and I were just talking the other day about how, Once you become aware of like those things too, it can become a new, um, perfection yardstick that, (laughs) right. (laughs) Yep. Right. So yeah. And that, it's so funny that you bring that up because that is exactly what happened to me in that I moved, I moved from Chicago to Denver Mm -hmm. and I knew I wanted to do a yoga teacher training because aside from the fact that I was trying to, you know, lose weight through yoga, the, the spiritual aspects of it had always really called to me. Yeah. You know, I was reading Hindu philosophy when I was 16 because I thought it was fascinating yes. and, you know, all, all of that. Um, so I decided to do a yoga teacher training and that was really great. You know, I felt in my body for the, f- like for the first time in a long time because yeah. I was doing so much that I couldn't not make my mind shut up sometimes. Yeah. But it was interesting because over the course of the next three years after that, I started teaching spinning. I started teaching bar. Mm -hmm. I started teaching kettlebell workouts. I got really, really into the fitness world Mm -hmm. and functional training and form and everything like that. And it was really, really great. And I loved it. And I was like, I finally have an outlet to give people what they want and like to give people confidence and strength. And about a year ago, I realized that I was still doing the exact same freaking thing. I was just channeling it in a different way. Like instead of going out and drinking till 4 a.m. and like guilt eating burritos and then hating myself the next day, I was beating myself up if I ate sugar one day or if I missed a workout or whatever it was. I was like, well, you know, if I could, but there's also the choices that we can make in terms of what's happening in terms of our mind and our attitude and our thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. And when I, when I walked like, so about nine months ago, I I walked away from my job as a fitness instructor and I decided that it was, it was time for me to do other things and to travel and to really build up the business that I've been working on. Um, and it was interesting. A couple of things happened. I almost cut my finger off. So I had surgery and I, (laughs) and I, it's fine. It's all good. Yeah. (laughs) But I, I I couldn't put, I couldn't put weight on it. Oh, um, wow. So you can do yoga. Or you could yes. yeah, do modified yoga. I couldn't do the yoga and gymnastics and the routines yes. that I was used to. Yes. And that happened at the same time as I moved away from my community and left my job and walked into another situation that wasn't actually really great. Yeah. Um, all of my normal coping mechanisms, like before when I would get stressed, yeah. I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to go to the gym yep. all day and work it out. Yep. It was gone. Yeah. And I had to – I had to – be uncomfortable and sit in my feelings be like, wow, I feel terrible right now. And I can't do anything to numb it because like, what do I do? And I was like, I don't, I don't feel at home. I was like, I just want it all to go away. And Oh, I realized like what I, I needed to learn how to be at home in my body. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't have any effing clue how I was going to do that. (laughs) But that's what had to happen. So the past year has, it's really been a journey of coming home to myself and to my body. Yeah. Self love isn't about loving yourself when everything is going well. Yeah. I was like, I was like, this is the moment right here where I can choose to beat myself up or I can be in it and be okay with it. Mm -hmm. 
and it was like it was like I don't know you can it was thunderstorming and lightning I, you can call it a divine flash of inspiration from God or totally. the universe or whatever pathetic fall- fallacy yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it, I really felt it like in the core of my being that I, I I said this and I was I was like I out loud I was like whoa I am fucking thrilled to be me right now and there's like snot like dried in my hair and I was like in the middle of nowhere, like in a rice field. Yes. Like, it's like I'm crying on a Friday night in the middle of paradise. Like, yes. what's happening? <laughs> but that was it. And I was like, I, I did it. I don't know how. I mean, I, I, I had practices and things in yes. place. And I was like, whoa, that's what it's about. It's mm-hmm. about not trying to eradicate all of the ick and get rid of the negative feelings and be perfect. And I, I had known that in my yeah. head, but I really felt that like, here I am you know, 15 pounds heavier than I was, not as in shape as I was, yeah. like, and I finally, I just didn't fucking care. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I am awesome. Yeah. Look at where I am right now. Yeah. Whatever happens, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And I slept for like 20 hours after that. But <laughs> you did big work, was, so you yeah. needed to sleep it off. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, that was the real moment. That was, there was the moment when I was 11 and there was this moment okay. maybe about, yeah, about six months ago it is like, it, it's understanding how we feel in our body. And this is something that I do with all mm-hmm. of my clients is I can tell you how I feel. I can explain it. I can ex- tell you why I feel that way. I can give you three, four five different theories as to why I might feel that totally. way. But for the longest time, I didn't actually name the physical sensations in my body. Mm-hmm. And it's really easy to bring it all back up here in our heads. Yeah. And so my practice, honestly, every day, it's pretty simple. It's not easy always, but it's simple. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's sitting and breathing and really checking in with what's what's happening right now. Yeah. And when you take a deep breath, your body sees that as a signal to just like to process whatever's happening. Yeah. And to give like, get a little check in and a tune in yeah. and And I realized, you know, how different things feel for me. Like when I, when I feel guilty, for example, um, I usually get, I get kind of red in my chest and I get it like my heart starts to beat a little bit fast and I feel this like gross feeling right in the center of my body. And really all that guilt is, is it's a feel it's, it's that your actions are out of alignment with what you believe. Yes. That's all that it is. Yeah. But we tell lots of stories about why yes. we feel guilty and, and we hold on to those stories for dear life. But and what really, it means about us. What, yeah. And like, oh, I'm a terrible person yes. because of yes. this and X and Y and Z. All that's happening is something like, and I noticed it because I feel it here in my solar plexus yeah. area, which is, you know, it's like your core. It's, yeah. it's your power center. Exactly. I feel it there because something is taking away my power, whether exactly. it's me or a circumstance or whatever, Choices you know, it's you oh, made. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, I love it so much. Like absolutely <laughs> in my own yoga practice and my yoga classes, that's exactly like sort of a practice of self-regulation and an iterative pa- practice too, of going pause, check in, yeah, honor what's happening, maybe take some action to address what's happening in your body. So Maybe change your breath a little bit, maybe stretch something if something's not feeling right, you know, all that stuff. And then pause, check back in, what happened, you know, and, and yeah. using that as a, a tool that we can, and I think that's a really important thing I like to stress too, is that that can be a skill that you can grow. People yes. don't necessarily see this as a skill, but the pause check in is such a skill that if it becomes second nature, when you're in a a more challenging and difficult situation, the pause check-in will be second nature and it'll help you go, oh, wait, I I am feeling feelings that feel really big. They feel a lot bigger than me, but what are they? And once you start to go, oh yeah, that's guilt. I got the the feelings, the redness, I got the heartbeat, that's guilt. Okay, so now I know, right? And it's, it's such important information for us to use and have at our disposable disposal. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's interesting. Cause I, I did that. Like I, I, that's very much how I teach too. Yeah. And 
I would notice in my own practice that when someone would tell me to check in with my body, I would immediately start to explain in my head what was going on in my body <laughs> yeah. instead of just fe- instead Feeling. of just know your body in order to accept it. Yeah. You know, if you refuse to look at your belly in the mirror, yeah. you're never going to yeah. love it or even yeah. like be okay with it. Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's another part of it. It's like like I love I love touching my body. I'm like always like feeling myself yeah. because I'm like wow, like this is Here this is, is mine. Like yeah. this belongs to me. Yeah. Um I didn't do that until maybe within the past year because yeah. I, I I kept wanting to reduce it and make it yes. go away instead of like really own it and embody it. Yeah. And that's another practice. It's like if you're feeling like crazy and anxious, um ground yourself, you know, like yeah. hold physically touch your legs and your hips mm-hmm, and your mm-hmm. belly and like roll your shoulders around mm-hmm. and feel that space. <laughs> yeah. And even if it doesn't feel like it's doing anything, you might feel a little silly, honestly, yeah. you're still making that connection physically yeah. to whatever's going on inside of you. <laughs> I love it. I'm doing it right. I could recommend like right now for people to maybe give that to try. So grounding and touching their bodies taking that moment to pause and check in. And I love how you pointed out that there's a, there is a subtle difference. You can check in with your body and rationalize it all in your mind, or you can just feel what's happening in your body. And that's a subtle difference. Yeah. Body never yeah. lies. Mind will play tricks, but body never lies. Yeah, that's exactly it. Your body will never lie to you. Mm-hmm. It might take a while, to understand what it's saying if we're not in the practice of communicating with our bodies, Mm -hmm. but our mind is going to, you know, our our ego, our mind, whatever you want to call it, it's going to do everything it can to keep us safe. Yeah. And so far you've survived. You're not dead. Yeah. And so your thought processes and where you are, that safety, that survival. Totally. They've gotten you to hear. Yeah. And it's crazy because sometimes like feelings like too much happiness or too much goodness, we self sabotage because it's actually perceived as a threat yeah. because that's not what we're used to. We're not, we don't know, like, I don't know if I can cope this way. Must go back to yeah. ways I've survived. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I will always tell people to breathe, Yeah, breathe, put your feet on the ground and just, it, I hate saying like, just be aware, but it, it's, it is, it's, it's that pause and that check-in and feeling before thinking. Yeah. Even if it's just cool. for a second and then your yeah. brain goes back into its spiral, that's fine. Yeah. Just for a second. Yeah. One every day. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So <clears throat> just to wrap up and inspire people. So if they start to do some of this practices that you're suggesting mm-hmm. as a body connection and confidence coach, um, what kind of changes could people expect in their life? What kind of changes have you seen in the last six months? You know, what are some of the differences? Oh, my gosh. I love going places now where I don't know people. I've always been outgoing, but I've always been shy at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, So for example, I used to project a lot out to hide whatever was really happening. Yes. And now it's like, and I notice this in my clients too, like I have had clients who are afraid to make eye contact with people who now can walk into the grocery store, chat up whoever around. Yeah. Um, I, I like getting dressed up more now, yeah. which is, it's interesting because before it used to be such a, like a, an anxious thing to put clothes on yeah. for a day or for a date or whatever I was doing yes. because like I was so focused on the parts of my body I didn't like. Yep. And now it's, it's a mindset change, but it's like, I, I just put on clothes that feel good yeah. and I feel good. Yeah. Like walking into a place I can, I, I know with confidence yeah. in my body, like I can feel it that I can talk to anybody in this room and learn something from them and have a good conversation. Yeah. So that's a big part of it. And it's also, you know, it's like the stuff we wait on. We wait to buy plane tickets because we're not sure if we're okay enough to travel. You know, if if we, if we can handle it, we wait to really play big in our businesses because, Oh my God, what if somebody sees that you're not perfect? And when you're in your body, you're not going to get those stories. It's just your body. Yeah. And whatever anybody else says about your body it's, it's, you start to learn that it's a, more of a reflection of them yes. than anything else. Absolutely. And I think that's the biggest thing. We realize that most of our stories that we have about other people or things that we, pre- we perceive things and they perceive things and we project onto each other. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the biggest change. It's, it's that 
it's the grounded confidence. It's not yeah. the outward yeah. swagger confidence, though that's yeah. awesome too. Yeah. It's just yeah. Can be really fun. feeling out. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, it's really being cool with either going out, staying in or sending off that email or not making, yeah. canceling plans if you need to take care of yourself. Yeah. Signing up for that yeah. speaking gig. I was just talking to yeah. somebody today. It's like, the big shift for me would be that I wouldn't feel so shy about starting to take on speaking gigs, you know, as a coach, right? Like not wanting to do stuff like where I'm visible and physically visible. Yeah. And it's, it's making conscious choices, not in the way of like, well, now that I'm conscious, I'm making choices to drink green juice every day. It's more like I'm choosing to do whatever I'm doing and there is no right or wrong in that choice. It's just my decision. Yeah. Yeah, so powerful. Awesome. Is there uh, any last messages you'd like to send out to our viewers? I think the biggest thing is don't worry about doing it all right now. We get overwhelmed very easily. Like, oh, but now this is another way that I have to be perfect. Yes. First of all, you're already perfect. Yeah. Second of all, if you don't believe me, then don't try and be perfect. Yeah. If that sounds impossible, start with your breath. Start with one second every day. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so easy. One second. One second. <laughs> we got one second. That's it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kate, for uh, joining the Body Love Summit. And I'm so glad that you brought your play, joy, you know, love and laughter energy <laughs> to the Body Love Summit. It's so important and such an important message that you're sharing with everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing your story. It's you know, that is where our power is, I think, in, as women, too, sharing mm-hmm. our stories around this. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks.